Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got another debate video and the subject was suggested by one of my subscribers. Since the 1980s, vegetable oil we've been told is super healthy, but despite much evidence contradicting this, it's still on the supermarket shelves and nobody talks about it that much. So I wanna discuss the potential dangers in vegetable and seed oil, but also give you different perspectives. All the following oils on your screen now come under this category. If you imagine squashing an orange, for example, to get the juice, it's pretty straightforward. But with vegetable and seeds, it's not simple at all to extract that oil. You have to use a solvent to extract a thick fluid from the seeds. It really stinks. It's refined in acid. It's deodorized. It's bleached. There's up to 17 chemical steps in an industrial plant to get the finished product. But even before you start that procedure, the plants will probably have been treated with pesticides and many may be genetically modified. So using common sense, how can we ingest such a thing and expect it to be good for our health? If you look at this graph, it shows you way back in 1911, there weren't many heart disease deaths. Then you see how vegetable oil was introduced and the deaths go up and up and up. So this graph shows how obesity increased as vegetable and seed oil consumption increased in the US. And you may be thinking, well, that was due to sugar. But look at this chart, which shows sugar has gone down slightly, but the increase in obesity continues. You also have something called the Israeli paradox. So the diet in Israel is what nutritionists would class as super healthy, but they also use more vegetable and seed oils than many other Western countries. The result is that the levels of cancer and cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes is the same as in the USA. So why are these oils so bad? Firstly, these oils contain high amounts of linoleic acid, around 50%, which is omega-6. So linoleic acid is a precursor for a pro-inflammatory molecule called arachidonic acid, if I pronounce that rightly. The Western world gets too much omega-6 and not enough omega-6. Maybe three and basically the two should be balanced to avoid inflammatory conditions. Back in the day before these oils were invented everyone cooked with animal fats like lard which have a very low omega-6 content you're talking about around two percent so omega-6 fatty acids oxidize easily and that means they break down into oxidization products and some of them are known toxins and potentially carcinogenic. They cause mutations in our cells and inflammation, which can lead to all kinds of issues like cancer and heart disease. But even virgin olive oil, which is not on the list of those dangerous oils, oxidizes after six weeks. Even if you keep it in the dark, in a dark glass container, you're supposed to throw it away after six weeks. And also olive oil oxidizes if you use it on a high heat. So olive oil should really only be used to fry on a medium heat. If you've got ghee or avocado oil should be used for high temperature. Obviously you can still use olive oil as a salad dressing or when it's cold. Secondly, these oils contain high levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs. They're also highly unstable and they also oxidize easily. So the fat content of the human body is about 97% saturated and monosaturated fat. So our bodies don't really recognize these PUFAs and don't absorb them correctly. Thirdly, even if you stopped eating these oils today, it would take four to eight years for your body to totally get rid of them. They become embedded in all our tissues, in our heart, lungs, eyes, brain, and skin. We accumulate these oils, not just in body fat on our bellies or our hips, but in all of our cells because we have a lipid layer in every single cell. That's why they cause issues all over our bodies. You may say, oh, I don't cook with seed oils or vegetable oils. I'm safe. I don't touch any of that stuff. But every time you eat in a restaurant or hotel or, or buy processed food, you will be eating it. It's in everything. Bread, dessert, quiche, coleslaw, frozen chips, most processed foods, everything that's grilled and fried. There are huge amounts in oat milk, which shocked me. Then take a look at mayonnaise. It's 75% rapeseed oil. Healthy salad dressings are made of it. Uh, people in the Western world aren't even aware they're eating so much of these oils. So pigs and chickens, which are fed with corn and soy, will be very high in linoleic acid. Eating them will raise your own omega-6. 
even farmed salmon will be high in omega-6 due to what they're fed. And you don't escape if you're a vegetarian because veggie burgers, which are based on soya, are also very high in seed oils and omega-6. So for the last six months or so, I've been trying to completely avoid these oils and it's almost impossible. So you have to read the labels of everything you wanna buy in the supermarket. It's hard as eating out is a normal part of socializing. And if you start telling people or friends or dates, you can't eat this or go to there because of vegetable oil, you're gonna look strange. And I found many people will look at you funny or they'll just walk away as it's too much. There's an app called Seed Oil Scout, which tells you which restaurants serve oil-free dishes. This is in several countries, but here in London, there's only a few restaurants and on it, not many people use it. The other thing you have to do in restaurants is say you have an allergy and ask them to prepare your food in butter or olive oil. You can download this card, which is free. You just hand it over to the chef and I'm going to link it below or you can make your own. Now I want to look at the other side of the argument. The Mediterranean diet has always been healthier than Western diets and that is high in olive oil. They've been cooking, roasting, frying with olive oil at very high heats for generations, yet they haven't had the same levels of heart disease and obesity until quite recently, which would suggest this oxidation argument isn't quite as clear cut. Also, I'm not sure every Italian or Spanish family throws away their olive oil after six weeks. I don't think that's a thing. At least I never heard of that while I was living in those countries. The other point I want to make is that there are plenty of very old people living, you know, in the area where, where I am who eat processed food because it's more affordable, but they're walking around relatively healthily. I think there's possibly a genetic predisposition to certain diseases. I want to mention Nutrition Made Simple, which is a YouTube channel of, I think he's Dr. Dr. Carvalho. He goes into detail about many studies which concluded that these oils did not actually cause any inflammation when people had been given these oils on a daily basis for between one to four months. And the inflammatory markers have not increased. In fact, in some of them, inflammation actually reversed. So these studies have been done in Norway, Canada, the US, in Peru, all different countries, and they cover sunflower oil, flaxseed, all kinds of different seed and vegetable oils. My first issue with these studies is, as the graph showed earlier, there's a time lag for this to kick in. It's not like you take a, take a sip of oil and then you suddenly have an immediate heart attack. I appreciate that these studies have been done, but they don't reassure me as they're too short. If they were over a 10 or 15 year period, fine, I would totally accept that. I'm also a bit uneasy how all these people commented under his video saying how relieved they are that these oils are safe and how there's so much misinformation out there and they're gonna get right back to eating those oils again. I don't think anyone should make a decision after watching one YouTube video, you should do your own research. There were two studies which were done on people for a period over seven years, one in Australia and the other in the US. They were split into two groups. One group were given increased levels of PUFAs, while the others continued with their normal diet. Both studies showed the groups given more vegetable oils had at least a 70% greater chance of dying from cancer and an increased risk of death by 62%. Secondly, the last few years have shown us that science has to be funded by someone. It's not cheap. Many companies like Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson pay to get scientific results which make their products look favourable. I would ask if these studies or universities or whoever's behind the studies have been funded or have any links with these companies which are manufacturing these oil products. So let's look at solutions. You can cook everything in butter or ghee rather than oils. Avocado oil or coconut oil is great for high temperatures or if you're a vegetarian. I've been using this odorless organic coconut oil and it has been really great so it says it's suitable for high heat frying and baking i've also used this for baking bread and it's amazing so avocado and olive oils are expensive and that leads to companies watering them down with cheap vegetable oils so you can't really be sure what you're getting exactly unless you go and visit the factory um, or wherever it's made. Because coconut oil is so cheap, this isn't a problem, so it may be a better alternative than olive oil or avocado oil. Another thing you can do is to supplement with omega-3. So if you don't have a diet high in oily fish or nuts, 
then this will help you to balance your omega-3 and 6 ratio. This is pure omega-3 capsules from Do Not Age and I have a discount code if you do want to try these. I'll link this below. They're made of fish so if you're vegetarian you would want a version which is made from algae and I have um, a link below on Amazon. So if you eat meat you could try the carnivore diet so you would cook with lard and butter and goose fat to keep omega-6 levels low. I do have a friend who's done that diet for a couple of months and she's lost masses of weight. And again, you'd have to be sure what the animals were fed. So I make my own chips or fries in an air fryer now without using vegetable oil. I don't buy them when I go out. Um, I found one vegetable burger called This Is Not Meat, which doesn't contain any of those oils and it tastes good too. I've only found one type of bread, which is oil free, and that's this Tesco pita bread. And I also found this Dr. Will's avocado oil mayonnaise which is a great alternative to normal mayonnaise but it's extremely expensive. This is a oil-free oat milk which I found is made by Plenish. So as a conclusion even if you don't buy this oxidation argument or if you think other factors have led to the obesity and inflammation crisis it certainly makes sense to avoid highly chemically processed oils they simply cannot be good for us no matter how you look at it. Same with cooking at home, whether you agree or disagree, it makes sense to go back to unrefined foods in their natural state. Eating out is a contentious issue, so food is one of the joys of life, and I personally try to pick stuff out on the menu which looks oil-free. Uh, you can always ask questions about it, and I have said a few times I want something fried in olive oil rather than vegetable oil and the staff have been completely fine. I think when you get into a habit of doing it, you find it easier. So maybe we should be content with drastically reducing our vegetable oil intake rather than completely eliminating it. The only exception is if you have a family history of cancer or some chronic condition or macular degeneration. Why wouldn't you try 100% to avoid eating that? So my grandmother has macular degeneration. One of the reasons why I'm trying to eradicate this. So I do personally find it a bit strange that the media is silent on this issue. We hear about the dangers of cigarettes and alcohol and drugs and COVID, but not this. So I hope that will change and surely capitalism will fill the void in the meantime. So surely oil-free restaurants and takeaway and delivery services would be hugely popular. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. It would really help my channel. If you've got any oil-free cooking tips or restaurant tips or advice, um, please comment below. Thanks so much for watching this video. And if you've got any subjects you want me to cover, please let me know and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.